everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Savvy Cast. I'm so grateful for all of you who are joining, whether you're joining, listening on the podcast, or you're watching on YouTube. I'm just grateful that you're here. I am very excited about today's episode. I have a very special guest, someone who means a whole lot to me and my family, my cousin, Christy McKinney. Hi, Christy. Hi, how are you? Christy has been on the podcast before with my blood cousin, Jonathan, who married her, and she's my cousin by marriage. She and Jonathan have been on a previous podcast that's probably one of my all-time favorites, so it's about just their family and just one of their children who has had a struggle and how they've overcome. And it's one of the most inspiring stories that I've ever heard. I highly recommend it. So you can go back to the podcast episodes and listen to that. Today, though, we're talking about something that I would venture to say is going to either affect everyone at some point in their life, or it may be now. And I want to tell you how Christy ended up on today's episode. For about the last two to three years, I have been having increasingly more severe foot pain. And primarily, or what was the worst would be cramps in my toes in the middle of the night. And then it progressively got to the point recently where I would just be in the middle of the day and I would get these cramps. And the only way I could describe these cramps was as if my toes would gnarl in and draw in and stick together. And it's almost like I could, they would just stick together Mm -hmm. and there would be these cramps and I would try to walk them out. I would go put my feet in a bucket of hot water. I've got this little pan, this little foot pan. And it started to really bother me because I would get advice from people here and there that would say, drink electrolytes or take this or take that. And I've, I bought yoga toes. I've done so many different things. So one day, I guess it was maybe two weeks ago, I put on my Instagram story, hey friends, does anybody know what to do about toe cramps? And I got a lot of responses, but then the response that led me to this podcast, this YouTube today is Christy who, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, she is in her studio. She is, I'll let her tell you, she's multi-talented in so many ways, but she's in the Pilates studio. She's very skilled at all of these things we're about to discuss. But she said, Jamie, I can help. Come to the studio. Let me make you an appointment. So long story short, I made an appointment I was amazed. I was blown away. I thought the only solution for foot issues was a podiatrist. And that's not the truth. And Christy, I'm about to let you take over because you are, you have so much to offer, but everyone listening, everyone watching, if you have foot pain, foot issues, anything like that, I highly recommend that you listen to Christy, see what's available to you whether you live locally in Birmingham or are somewhere else. And I will put everything she discusses, all links to whether it's products or materials, everything for you podcast listeners, it will be in the show notes. All of you on YouTube, I will link below. So you will be able to access all of this after this ends. So Christy, thank you. And you just take it away how to help us with our feet. Yes. So, um, yeah, I became a gait guru through um, a lady in Golden, Colorado. Gait? Yeah, gait guru. G-A-I-T, gait, like walking gait. Mm-hmm. Um, guru is what it's called, and it's an education program that I took and tested out on um, through Dr. Conley and also Dr. Perez. It's two ladies that um, are chiropractors by trade, but they became foot specialists. And unbelievable education and so they're in golden colorado right outside of denver and so that's who i became got my education through and have learned a lot through but i personally had foot pain for almost 25 years i had um from the time i was 15 until almost 40 and no one could help me 
So I had had two foot surgeries. I had had multiple orthotics, tons of options of shoes that were terrible options that were prescribed to me that never worked. And every morning I woke up in terrible foot pain. And I just thought it was something I was going to have to live with. One of those things where, you know, my parents say, oh, your grandmother mother had foot pain. So, okay, I just got to get over it. Well, I, we were with my job. I'm a master instructor for Pilates, but one of my passions is feet because of my own journey with feet. And so I was in California in a lab. We dissected cadavers with my old master instructor job years ago. And the physical therapist leading us through it got to the feet and we were looking at four different cadaver legs. I know that's kind of gross for some of you out there. Wow. But it's how you learn. And, um, yeah. and as he got to the feet, he said, what kind of shoes do you think this lady wore? And her feet were like this, like a hammer toe mm -hmm. and narrow like this. And people started to say, oh, probably high heels. And then he said, okay, if she had feet like this and wore shoes like that, then what do you think she walked like? And so she had limited range of her ankle. So her foot wasn't doing its job. So she probably nubbed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you've seen women walking in heels, they nub. Yeah. And then, so he said, what happens up the chain of the leg? So your knees do too much. Your hips do too much, more than they're supposed to be doing. And so he said, so what do you think, what do you think her knees look like? And so we looked under her kneecap and sure enough, she had no cartilage and oh. her knees looked terrible. And then he said, what do you think her hips look like? And we looked at her hip and her hips didn't look good. And he said, you know, some of this is age, yes, but a lot of it is she, if she had been using her feet and learning to walk properly, her hip and knee wouldn't have had to do so much. And she could have been a much more functional and probably she was in a lot of pain when she passed away. And then mm -hmm. we did that with every one of our people. And I literally was like, what? No one's ever told me this. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, he said, all she needed to do was exercise her feet. And so that was when I came home and I made it my mission to learn. All, I'm just still learning constantly about the feet. And I learned, I met Dr. Conley through Instagram and then now through, she's my mentor. And over all of this, I have, I am not in pain anymore. I have no more foot pain. I walk around barefoot all day. Whereas people, doctors told me, you can't ever walk barefoot. You need to always wear a cushion. And so there's all this misinformation in the world that's telling us wear a supportive shoe, wear a cushion shoe all these different things that are actually making us more unbalanced, more in pain, less stable. And even our elderly communities, we know that we know that we know by studies that 80 to 90% of all elderly falls are because of lack of big toe flexibility. They're not using their big toe. Not 80 to not, like that's a big amount of percent that we have done studies and seen that they're falling for that reason. Okay, can I stop you right there? Because I know, and I'm still learning what you prescribed for me. I've got my list and I'm doing it. Do I have the big toe issue? Because I almost fall at least once every two weeks. Now, it's usually walking down the stairs, but I feel like I'm constantly keeping myself from falling. Yes. Okay, so I'll go to Jamie's. I'll give an example. So Jamie comes to me. She has cramps. So, and her feet are drawing up. And so we know in the foot world that if your feet are cramping, there's usually, if she's doing electrolytes, that's, that is a component of cramps, but she was experiencing cramps when she was wearing a flat shoe, like an uh. Mm -hmm. And so what I discovered from just doing an assessment on her is that she has tightness up, we call it the posterior chain. I'm trying to use layman's terms, but up the back of her body. So her big toe could move, but it was limited because of the, not because her big toe, toe joint, I'm using my hand instead of my foot, yeah, yeah. But was limited, but because her, the back of her body was tight. So for instance, she could not flex her ankle at the degree that she needed to. So it's not just a matter of, hey, I need to stretch the back of my leg. You also need to strengthen the front of the body as well. So you want to strengthen the front, which will lengthen the back. All right. So it's kind of like when I'm strengthening. So I'm teaching Jamie how to strengthen the front of her shin and say, that's my shin. This is her foot so that she can lengthen the back. So she's feeling these cramps when she goes flat because she's used to wearing a shoe with a heel on it. And so it shortened her back chain of her body. And so and weakened the front chain of her body. 
And so lots of people, they have no idea that that's happening. And even Nikes today, all kinds of shoes have a heel lift on the back and it slants the foot. So it puts us in this position all day of having a lifted heel, shorten the back chain and lengthening the front chain. And then people go to put on a, a flat shoe and they feel they get cramps or they get yeah. So what you're saying, Christy, because, you know, I wear more wedges or that kind of thing. But but so what you're saying is men are, are probably wearing heels Absolutely. because a heel doesn't mean, quote, high heel. In Absolutely. OK, so yeah. even tennis shoes and athletic shoes, you're saying they're made like a heel. Absolutely. Define a heel. How many is that? Is it so many inches or centimeters? Yeah. Yeah. Those numbers. I have a chart that I did not bring with me, but there. We'll, in, we'll include it. Yes, we'll include it. But like you want a flat shoe is ideal. Now hear me say ideal. There are people in the world who do need certain things based on structural things they were born mm -hmm. with based on surgical procedures they've already had that we cannot reverse. So, but mm -hmm. ideally a typical foot, you want a flat shoe, a level shoe. And when you start to lift the back of the shoe, you're putting all this pressure on the metatarsal heads. That's the ball of the foot and the toes. And so, and then when you do that, you start to compress the bones and your foot ends up being shaped in whatever shoe you're wearing. So just like braces shape the teeth, mm -hmm. your shoes shape your feet. And your shoe, your feet will literally start to become shoe-shaped feet instead of a foot-shaped foot. So Oh my goodness. Yes. So you're saying to all of us women who wanna follow, you know, and yourself included, that it's ideal to wear flat shoes. Yes. So I am a woman, so I get that there's occasional weddings and things we have to wear a, a nice shoe to that has it. We want to look cute, right? I get it. But we want to learn what to do before we put our foot in that shoe. And when we take our foot out of that shoe, how to take care of our feet. Foot health, it's your stabilizing factor. And if it's oh the 80% reason why elderly people are falling, all of us need to be learning about what is making us stable. And even orthotic shoes, you go to those SAS stores or whatever, there's all these stores that are promoting elderly people putting the most heavy, big, thick, stiff shoe, and then right. it's making them even more unbalanced. Okay, well, I will say, and I think everyone watching or listening understands this, when your feet hurt, for whatever reason, nothing goes well. Like I stepped on a splinter, well, a piece of glass, two nights ago. It's been a little bit miserable. When I cramped, I cramped up in the middle of, I was in sacks look, getting something altered or whatever. I had to literally go to the bathroom, take my Uggs off and just walk around for 10 minutes in the store till my feet got normal. It, it's, it's debilitating, you know, it's, to, it, it's just, so whether it's that or whatever, feet are so important. So Christy, you, you know my issue. So basically for someone listening who says, well, I've had this or this, I know there are different things. How do you differ from, say, a podiatrist? And if someone comes to you and they, they say something's wrong, I don't know what, how do you assess them? Yes. And how might that be different? Yes. So what I'll do is when someone comes in, I'm looking at a movement perspective, like what's gotten them to this place in the first place. So my perspective is very much like, I want to get them on the other side of it, right? And so, you know, I didn't go to medical school, so I wasn't trained to respond to it in a, um, you know, with medicine or with um, surgical Surgery. procedures. I was trained to respond with movement because most chronic pain is because of ill movement patterns, things we're doing daily. Now, mm -hmm. acute pain that happens, blunt force or something like that, that's something that, you know, right. is not chronic. It's not something we do in daily. So I'm trained to look at the body and the feet. And so feet are my favorite. So when people come in, what I'll do is I'll put them on the treadmill. I slow motion video their gait from the front side, barefoot with shoes, maybe sometimes without shoes, sometimes both. Look at the gait on the slow motion video. And then I have a, I'll show you this. I have a little pedograph machine and it has, it's called a foot mapping system. And so all we do is we put ink on one side and then 
they walk across it so you're not getting ink on their foot. And then mm -hmm. it helps me. And like, you'll have a page that shows their foot. And what it shows me is what's going on in their feet. Where are they putting most of their weight? So that's two of my assessments. The other assessments I do is I look at how, just a simple thing like a calf raise. Mm -hmm. People sometimes, I find people all the time, like for instance, plantar fasciitis. That's one a lot of people are misdiagnosed with or overdiagnosed with, I should say. And a lot of times they'll say, for years I've had, uh, nobody can help me. I've had this for years, the fasciitis. And I'll watch them do a calf raise and they're athletic people. I'm talking mm -hmm. people who really work out and they can't lift even half of what their ankle is supposed to be doing. And oh, I already wow. know, wow, they could have just been doing a correct calf raise and it probably will fix the issue. So I'm looking at calf raises. I'm looking, and then I, like Jamie, I lay you down and I look at the range of motion in your ankle mm -hmm. and in the metatarsals of the feet, the ball, the foot, the toe joint itself, because your toe joint is going to be one of your main, it's one of the main balancers and how you push off. And so I look at these different things and there's several assessments I would do. But usually from those, that handful I just mentioned, I usually can find a path just from those things. And so like bunions, very common one. If it's a severe bunion, I usually refer out because sometimes it's too late and I yeah. refer out to like a podiatrist or a right. person. But if it's like a mild or moderate bunion, you can really fix those with things like the toe separators, which will link in this and things like correct movement patterns and learning how to exercise the muscles of the feet. And nobody ever talked about the muscles of the feet. And I've been in fitness for 15 years. Nobody talks about that stuff until I did this education. And um, so, and I have a lot of education. I mean, I'm a master yeah. instructor. So um, I'm and teaching. Pil and Pilates, you're a master instructor in Pilates. And before that, I educated group exercise instructors. Like I taught them how to do that job. And now I teach how to teach Pilates and how to, and now I teach how to do a posture assessment on people. And so um, yeah. I'm, you know, and I didn't know any of that. So in, in my education, we have case studies every, I have one tomorrow night and it's all physical therapists. It's all clinicians, people in the world. Um, and it's all around the world. And we join together and we're looking at these people's feet and doing a case study. So it's like, we're learning together constantly. It's well, that. Christy, I will say you're the reason that I started what I can't believe I lived without and I will probably go to my grave doing, and that's Pilates. Yay. Um, you inspired me to do that, and I've never looked back. And I remember what you said that sold me, but you said Joseph Pilates said, if you want to feel good the rest of your life, take Pilates, or did someone say that about Pilates? Yeah, so it, the quote was, well, all you can do it the rest of your life, maybe, but I'll quote this final one. Like, yeah, um, it said, uh, you can be 20, but if you have, if your spine is inflexible, you can be old, but if your spine is flexible, okay. you're 60, you can be young. So he, yeah, just the, the spine is really determining the health of the person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has changed my life, um, Reformer Pilates. And I just see that the repetition of all the different things we do in Pilates, but yet I felt better in every aspect since doing Pilates. And it's been over a year, but my feet, I could not figure out why I was like, what? So you have, you've diagnosed me, you've given me things to do. What about people who are listening who they they want to get assessed and then they want to get their plan. How do you do that yes. remotely? Yes. So what they would need to do is just reach out to me through my email and we can post that in the bottom. And then what I do is set up a FaceTime video. And even though I don't have a pedograph machine, a foot mapping system, they can send me either themselves being filmed on a treadmill by a friend in mm -hmm. slow motion or walking just fine walking down the street. Somebody has to film you. And then I can do a, several assessments over um, FaceTime or Zoom and just kind of see and then give them a, a plan of action from that point. And if I feel like I it's out of my league, something that I cannot handle, I refer out to Dr. Emily Schleichel. She's a functional podiatrist who used to be a foot surgeon but she had all these clients and patients coming in that didn't need surgery. Mm -hmm. And she just could not keep doing it because she said, I ethically felt 
like I, I can help them without surgery. Mm. And so she became a podiatrist. So I just refer out to them to a virtual assessment with her. She's in Arizona, but she does a virtual consult and she's fantastic. So, so you are connected at every level. So if okay. you can't help, then you, 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 um, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Christy, and I do want to mention this because it was a, a very telling to me, but I bought a pair of very popular shoes. I'll, well, I'll just say it Hoka's because mm -hmm. everybody's talked about how great they felt, how good they were for you. And when I first tried them on in the store, I thought, whoa, these are awesome. But then after I wore them a day or two, my feet would start hurting when I wore them. Hmm. And what did you tell me about those? Because I, you know, they're not inexpensive. Yes. So I'll kind of tell you the difference between what we're moving towards as a barefoot shoe is what you're wanting to move towards our minimalist type of shoe. Mm -hmm. And what our culture is going towards is a very, like a Hoka, is a very stiff, and heavy, thick soled shoe that's doing the work for you. So a hook is called a rocker shoe because it's shaped like that. And so it's rocking the foot. So every time you step, it's kind of like a rocking horse action. So that shoe is a miracle worker for people that have either what we call hallux rigidus, which is when your toe joint is completely stiff by surgical reasons or because of it ossified for some reason, there's some type of reason why your big toe doesn't move. Those people cannot, what we call toe off. They're not pushing off their big toe anyway. So they need that. They have to have, I think Topos also create a rocker shoe. It's a different type of brand. But anyway, those are great shoes for them. For us, for people with us, we want a functional foot. We don't have a that problem. When we wear that, what it does is it's kind of like you take up your foot and you're casting it. When we cast our foot and we take the cast off, our feet are what? They're weak. Mm -hmm. So we have inhibited our muscles movement. And so we're not using the foot the way it's meant to be used. We have over 150 muscles, bones, ligaments, tendons, just the foot. And wow. so if we just compress it and then don't let it do its job, it start, it's supposed to be doing this, like almost like a wave every time it lands. And the shoe... We want a flat shoe that's flexible and that's why. So some people have issues with like the fat pads on their feet. There's, there's exceptions. Some people do need a little cushion. There's, but you need an assessment to know that you need it. Your clinician, mm -hmm. your local person or someone to assess what, how to transition to a barefoot, because say you go from a Hoka and then you try barefoot, you could injure yourself. You mm -hmm. could tear some muscles in your feet or your Achilles mm -hmm. tendon. So you don't want to just, oh, I'm going to go from a super supportive shoe to a super unsupportive shoe because it's just like a weight. You wouldn't start lifting a super heavy bicep curl weight. You would work your way up to it. It's the same thing with your feet muscles. Why, why would we not work our feet muscles the same way we work all the other muscles, right? And so um, you just want that. And I'll show you my shoe that I have with me. Now, I have several different types of barefoot shoes, but... This is what I'm talking about, flexible. Like I can roll this shoe up. And then you see how wide my toe box is. So many, especially women's shoes, they are so narrow that we're compressed. And that's what a lot of my foot pain was from. Mm -hmm. And then also, yeah, I told you flat, flexible, and wide. So you can, a lot of people just buy a wide shoe and they think that that's solving the problem. But I have my toe, so I put my toe separators on and I'll show you my foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I love those. I those I bought them and they're great. Yeah, oh, they go on your feet and they can and if you cannot fit this in your shoe, that's not the worst thing in the world, but that's ideal. Especially if it's gonna be your athletic shoe. And let me may I say this because I have the yoga toes. I bought those before I consulted with you. You cannot walk around in your yoga toes. Mm -hmm. You have to be sitting down and you know. But the ones that you recommended, I love them. I can walk or I can wear them and, and some of my shoes even. So um, will you provide us with links Absolutely. to, to mm -hmm. all of that? Yeah. And Christy, I, I just want to um, end with this. Is there any way that does insurance cover this or, or, or is this just something like a Yeah, okay. it's a yeah. cash service. And so they it's would come in. Yeah, it's worth it. And I charge $80 for an assessment. So, and all they do is, you know, we use Venmo. If you're going to do virtual, if you're coming in the studio, we just use the card. And so 
we, and we assess, it's an hour long, well, 55 minutes is a typical assessment. And then we just go from there, a treatment plan, whether that's coming in to see me regularly, whether that's doing home exercises, if you're virtual, or if that's better for your budget, whatever. I just work with people's budget and whatever they want to do. And because I have tons of people who like to come two to three times a week. And then I have people who just check in with me once a month and they're doing their exercises. And the point is, I want to see progress. I want to see them getting stronger and more functional. Well, and, and Christy, also even just being able to maybe message you before purchasing a pair of shoes, because sure. I mean, athletic shoes are easily $200 or yes. 150 So do you like say, hey, or, or even at the consultation, like I told you, I said, well, I like on cloud. Are they okay? Or so yeah. there's a lot of things that you can provide, even in the assessment that they'll be able to use that Absolutely. we can use. And then you gave me at my assessment, a list of my exercises, a list of all the different things the, that I could buy, you know, the, the toe separators. So you get a whole lot in that initial assessment. And I will just say personally, I was I was willing to do anything to pay anything because the cramps were getting worse. And, you know, I know other people have different things that are way worse than cramps. So I think it's worth it to make sure your feet are in good health. So Absolutely. I'm so, so thrilled that that you're doing that and that you're connected with with the best of the best. In, in the world in this this area. So Christy, I am so grateful. And is there anything else you want to share um, before we sign I, off? I can just, if also I can direct them to my Instagram account. So I call myself Imperfect Pilates. So, and I'll post different things on my, uh, I have a little tab that says feet are my thing and just some different exercises to do too. I have like things called toe yoga and just some foot strengthening things that seem so silly, but they actually are very effective in helping strengthening your feet. So if you want any other information, you can also reach me through there. That is awesome. Thank you, Christy. This has yeah, been you. wonderful. I'm so excited to share you with everyone who's listening and watching. And thanks to all of you listening and watching. And until next time, you be blessed and stay savvy.